Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and today I've got a lot to say about the future of evergreen mechanics. An evergreen mechanic is something that can be present in any set. For example, flying or first strike, as opposed to say, flashback or magecraft, which only appear in sets where they're a featured mechanic. This distinction is important. Having featured mechanics elevates them to a special level of focus and makes sets feel different from one another. Plus, the return of a loved mechanic like Morph or Flashback is just one more reason to get excited. But what about the evergreen mechanics? Richard Garfield introduced a great batch in Alpha, with ones like Trample, First Strike, and my pick for best mechanic in all of Magic, Flying. Of course, there were also some that have fallen by the wayside over time, like Regeneration, Landwalk, and of course, Banding. But over the years, as we've tried more and more abilities in Magic, we've taken ones that worked out well and can go on a lot of cards and turned them into keywords too. If you're newer to the game, you might not know that haste was not a keyword from the beginning of Magic. It wasn't even added until 6th edition in 1999. Similarly, Vigilance showed up in Champions of Kamigawa, Flash in Time Spiral, and most people forget about how Future Sight added in some permanent evergreen staples with Reach, Death Touch, and Lifelink. And even recently, we're still adding evergreen mechanics and keywords. You might have noticed how Mill was finally keyworded in Core Set 2021, or how we added Ward in Strixhaven. It's something we're constantly evaluating. There are a few reasons why we might turn something from being unkeyworded into a keyword. The first reason is how often we use it. This one is straightforward. A major point of a keyword is to help with understanding. So when you see something once and take the time to learn the vocabulary, it will pay dividends as you see that same keyword on many other cards. Mill was used all the time, so keywording it made a lot of sense. The second reason is to give colors more tools. Some mechanics that appear are actually things we hadn't used very much prior, but played well and were going to be very helpful to have in a colors toolbox. Menace and Ward are both great examples of this. They weren't used a ton prior to becoming named mechanics, but now that they are, it's much easier to use them on things like common keyword cycles and rares with pretty full text boxes. Plus, it's a named thing you can key off of, as we saw a bunch of in Aquaria. And finally, another big reason is text length. It might not sound thrilling, but something we're always up against as magic designers is space on a card. And while yes, you can joke that recently we've been using packed double-sided cards, something we've definitely heard feedback on, even a simple mill card was still wordy. Take Glimpse the Unthinkable. For such a simple effect, it took 13 words, and now it only takes five. And while that might not sound like a ton, especially when you embed it in something else the card is doing, it really makes a difference. Compare side by side the pre-mill and post-mill the mending of Dominaria to see how much of a difference it can really make. So why not make everything a keyword? Well, keywords are a double-edged sword. While they're great for people deep into magic, every bit of terminology is one more thing someone starting to play feels like they need to memorize. And if people are taking time learning mechanics they'll probably never see again, that's additional new player effort for little gain. A keyword mechanic is almost like a promise that learning it will be valuable in the future. Otherwise, why would we teach it to you? It's the same reason that when Consider didn't surveil, and I did a whole video about this, you can go watch, people were upset. People took the time to learn surveil, so just let the card surveil but more on Surveil in a bit. For example, here are some cards I recently mocked up the text for based on popular asks and posted on Twitter. You've got Wishclaw Talisman and Brago here, but with some of the wording changes I'm often asked for. The response, very mixed. Everyone seemed to find elements of the new templating that they liked and others that they didn't, but people couldn't agree on which was which. So much care has to go into changes like this. Why was I talking about this at all? Well, that brings me to the next section. You see, I asked Twitter a simple question. What's a commonly used line of text that you wish was keyworded in magic, but currently isn't? And nearly 500 replies and a thread that hit the top of the magic subreddit later, thanks Honor Basquiat for sharing the question, I've seen a ton of requests. I thought I'd go through some of the most popular and tell you how likely we are to actually see them 
keyworded. Much like Mark Rosewater's if or when, I will give each of these a rating. Unlikely or possibly. An unlikely mechanic is one I think is unlikely to be keyworded. A possibly mechanic is one that I could see becoming one someday, but no guarantees. And I do want to stress the I part of this. We have an amazing editing, rules, and templating team, not to mention a team of brilliant other designers who are all thinking about this stuff. I'm just one voice in the room. This isn't definitive, but it is directional. With that said, let's get started. First up is Blink. We make a lot of cards that exile a creature and then return it to the battlefield. This is definitely a lot of words, and we do it in most sets, so it could totally make sense as a keyword action. The problem, though, is that different cards blink in different ways. Some cards return immediately, others return at end of turn, some return it under owner's control, while others return it under your control. Some return it tapped. We do these different kinds of blinks for different reasons, and we definitely aren't going to have different keywords for blink and slide and cloud shift. Writing just blink on some cards and blink until end of turn on others is a very strange template. This kind of splitting of mechanics is a common theme among this list. So keep a keen eye out and maybe you'll predict some of the others. Anyway, because of these differences, I'm going to say this one is unlikely. Next up, activate only any time you could cast a sorcery. I'll say that personally, I've disliked this text ever since I was a kid and me and my brother had a huge debate over if you could activate Mind Slash without a sorcery in your hand. So maybe I'm just biased, but I'd love to explore this more. I know we've even talked about it casually before, using a word or even a symbol to indicate limited timing. There are a ton of abilities which are more fun at sorcery speed than instant speed, and would probably do more tap abilities if there was better text to limit them to sorcery speed. Or on your turn, would pick one we felt was the most clear. I'd say this one is a possibly. Next, I'll talk threaten effects. Untapping and stealing a creature is a popular red ability, and we do tend to use it about once per set. However, Given that we really only do use it about once a set, and it's only in one color, I don't see a large enough boon to making it a keyword. Even if it was a keyword, and it dramatically cut the number of words, I don't think we'd use it much more often than we currently do. This is an unlikely for me. Next up is Freeze, tapping a permanent and having it not untap. Mostly in blue, though very occasionally in white. Thanks White Dragon, Core Hookmaster, and Blinding Beam for that. Anyway, this is an effect we use a little bit, and mostly in one color, and usually it's on common effects where we don't mind writing it out. I don't see a huge impetus to keyword this, given frequency or need, though it does shave off words. I'm going to put this one into the unlikely camp, though I think it's pretty close to the line. If we started using freezing a lot more or brought it more into white, I could see keywording it. I also want to shout out the suggestion of exerting those creatures, a way to do this which uses a keyword action we've already created. Quite clever. A very popular one was enters the battlefield, changing that to be a singular word, like arrives. This one isn't a huge savings, but we do it so often, I could definitely see going down this path. Plus, when this creature enters the battlefield is already a bit jargony already, so swapping it for when this creature arrives is a pretty reasonable swap. This is one I could see happening, so I give it a possibly. Looting or rummaging were two that were mentioned a lot. Looting being drawing then discarding, and rummaging being discard and then drawing. The challenge here to me is precisely that I wouldn't want to do two keywords here, but I also wouldn't want to do one without the other. Additionally, while it looks all fine and good on a merfolk looter, this just doesn't work on a ton of cards. Catalog is not looting. Thrill of possibility is not rummaging. The fact would have to slice these two abilities thin and then not even use them on a wide swath of cards that look similar indicates to me that the chances here are looking unlikely. Impulsive draw, or as I always try to make happen, Sean draw, which is exiling the top card of your library and then letting you play it, runs into the problem of us wanting different cards to work different ways. Some let you play lands, others don't. Some let you play it this turn, others extend it to the next. And while you could argue that syncing it up is the right call, I predict we'll want enough granularity here that this is unlikely 
to be keyworded. And while we're on red effects, let's talk about deals damage. I got a decent crowd of people wanting deals damage to become something like burn or ping. First of all, you have the issue of standardizing what it means. Having burn only mean creature or player but not planeswalker is going to lead to some odd cards. But let's presume you get past that and just write something like burn three target creature or planeswalker or burn target creature or planeswalker for three. Not only do I find that awkward to read, but just far less clear and evocative. It would really need to be a word that worked generically too, because having Gideon's reproach burn is such a mismatch for such a common mechanic. While this does shave words off of cards, and there are a lot of damage dealing cards, I dislike the implementation of this enough that I'm going to rate it unlikely. Feel is important, and this one really feels wrong to me. Drain, as in dealing damage and gaining that much life, runs into a lot of the similar problems as burn. It also has the side problem of sometimes it deals damage and gains you that much life, and other times makes your opponent lose life and you gain life. We would have to standardize it for this. Not a huge problem, but just one more issue. We also just don't use it a lot, dropping it into the unlikely column. Next up is steal a card and mana wash it, seen on cards like Gaunti and Stolen Strategy. Something that I think is interesting is how with the rapid growth of multiplayer magic and commander, we may need to implement some new keyword mechanics that are right for that format. Stealing and letting you cast your opponent's stuff seems to be coming up more and more as we design for that format, and the words for it are pretty horrendous. While this is one we don't use a ton, I could totally see turning this into a keyword being a great savings, and maybe even inspire us to use it on a few more standard cards to boot. I give this a possibly. Tutoring is something that was brought up, changing search your library for a card to tutor for a card. Besides the fact that it would need a name which fits searching your library for an array of land types, really what you're doing is combining search your library into a single word. This is one I don't see a gigantic benefit to. You only chop off 11 characters or so, and you move from something which is very easy to understand to something which is fairly opaque if you don't know what the keyword is. I have heard some people argue that you could just chop the your library and make all searches from your deck, but I think that could be fairly confusing for a new player who reads Eladomri's Call as a raised dead. I don't feel strongly about this one, but I lean slightly on the side of unlikely. Can't be blocked by power two or less is an interesting one, in that we even talked about keywording it and calling it Daunt back in Kaladesh, but we discovered both we wanted to use it less than we thought, and that also we might want to wiggle the number around sometimes instead of locking it in on two. Ironically, we haven't really done much besides two or less, but given that we went through the rigor of trying it and deciding not to keyword it, I think this one lands on the unlikely side. Picking a word that means animating a non-creature into a creature was an ask that would definitely get use, and we do them often enough to consider it. The biggest issue I have is that it's really just a side grade. Shortening stuffed bear into animate stuffed bear into a 4-4 green bear artifact creature until end of turn is essentially the same length, and animate is slightly less clear than becomes. It's most helpful on lands, where you could remove the it's still a landline and bake that into the animate rules, which is all fun and games until you have Grandmaster Flowers, who doesn't want to remain a planeswalker when it animates. This one could happen, but just doesn't have enough upside to me. I give it an unlikely. Balance is a word everybody uses for returning a permanent to its owner's hand, and one which would eliminate to its owner's hand on cards, since you can bake that into the rules for balance. It mostly shows up in blue, but could also be used in white for loyal griff and other rescuing cards. This is one which makes a decent amount of sense to me. It shaves words off every single one of these cards, and unsets aside, every bounce card returns to owner's hand, so specifying that on every single unsummon doesn't feel necessary. The main upside to the status quo is that it makes it extra clear for newer players where the card goes. But this is one I could possibly see. One popular ask was removing card names from game text and using this instead. For example, when this enters the battlefield. This frees up words at the cost of being less clear. 
I'm sure there are also some card tags which become extremely tough to read or sound weird when you replace the card's name with this. And that's also not to speak of how this might impact translations into other languages, where card names are going to be much more clear. This one gets a firm question mark for me, as I'm sure there are pretty good reasons for clarity that we do things this way, and I'm sure a magic editor could have a great discussion about the pros and cons of each approach. And finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Surveil. So many people threw it in as a joke, and I did a whole video about why I consider it didn't Surveil. You can go watch that for more in-depth breakdown, but I wanted to mention it because I give Surveil a possibly. All the discussion around Consider definitely got us chatting more about it. People clearly like Surveil, and having access to it as a tool could allow fun build-arounds. Now don't get me wrong, there are still a lot of challenges. Having Scry and Surveil in the same set could be strange, but it's at least on our radars. So, which of these would you most want to see adopted as evergreen keywords? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again on Wednesday, and in the meantime, may you find just the right words to say what you need. You got this. All right. Yeah. So, so Prosh is a like a sacrifice commander, and he makes Cobalt. So he is a six mana, three B R G five five flying. When you cast Prosh, create X zero one red Cobalt creature tokens named Cobalts of Kirkheap. Oh wow, old Woo! school. Yeah. Where X is the amount of mana spent to cast.